Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Sorry about that. Looks like we had a couple leftovers after the last takeover attempt. Either way, from everybody here at R5 Central, happy holidays! Welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. There was much discussion this week whether to wrap this opening to theme music. And by much discussion, we mean Alan just said no before a complete thought could form. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where only gifts get wrapped at this year. Maybe that's better. Your guess is as good as mine. Show number 600, December 7th, 2016, with this week's topic, Super Mario Brothers. And now, things we should have done for our 600th show. Interview Leiji Matsumoto. Or Masamune Shiro. Or Ramiko Takahashi. Or just on a special opener. Or maybe just sleep. And now, that guy most people warned you to never ask questions about, Alan Chase. You know, I could have made stuff out of bacon. We could have done that. <laughs> A little <laughs> bacon fest. I don't know. Hi, everyone. We're baconating our duck holes here on OG for the 600th show. Yes, um, we are 600 weeks old, um, and we are Hooray. progressing, I don't even know what the number, do the calculation, 52 <laughs> by 12, and that's when we'll be 12 years old. So we're about 11 and a half years old at this point so somewhere near june probably early june is when we hit but the real anniversary date is june 15th mm-hmm. so um yeah we're 600 weeks old which is i think <laughs> pretty much a record over most podcasts most not everyone is still running from back in the early days but there are people who hit number 600 because mm-hmm. there are people who put out like youtube or podcasts that are like you know three shows a week kind of thing mm-hmm. so the number itself for me isn't really a number milestone uh in the grand scheme of things uh for us I don't know, it just means we're 600 weeks old so uh yeah we've been doing it for a while moving on from that hi everyone i'm alan uh i'm the guy who started this problem 600 weeks ago <laughs> um and the rest of you please introduce yourselves uh, hi, I am Matt. Catch up. I'm Bryce. And Paul. And Paul. We have a poll this week. Hey, hello. And we have a Matt this week. <laughs> hello. What's Breach? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the UD crew? Indeed. Um. So what did I do? I watched a bunch of movies. I started an effort that was meant to be two phases. Uh, it was really meant to be one phase, and then it turned into two phases. I was supposed to clean up my area back here, and I started... Oh, clean up your uh, home studio. Studio. Uh, yeah, so there's the studio side and there's the office side, which really is, you know, all of like uh, three feet of difference here. Um, it's all on the same table. So once I'm once I'm done on that side, then I'll start going through and I'm going to rewire and recable manage and clean up all the junk you guys leave around. <laughs> I am <laughs> fastidious. On, the, on uh, the studio side of this room. Um, so I'm going to go through and kind of get organized. And I am off like towards the end of the year, so. I got plenty of, of, of bandwidth coming uh, for me to make sure that I get that stuff done. So, um, yeah, with that said, uh, the other stuff that I did, I recorded another Polymatic. Uh, I believe that got released uh, on Sunday. And uh, another Con Luke got released on Sunday, before I forget. Um, 
but moving on from that, I watched a bunch of movies. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so, so what I movies say that, did you see, Alan? I yeah. said this with hesitation, intentionally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Ilza, she Can wolf of, of the SS. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there are. That's a classic. There are definitely <laughs> uh, there are definitely more uh, to talk about, but. Um, the two that come to mind that are worth commenting about. Um, mm. I watched Independence uh, Revenge or Resurgence. Resurgence. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind. It was actually pretty good. Um, it, it, you know, the, the first one was kind of hokey film, and I enjoyed it. Um, and the second film um, is was actually kind of hokey, but you enjoyed it. Um, yeah. <laughs> It, yes, yes, but it's a good like sci-fi uh, about like where we should be at. I guess the the idea that we know how to do things with cold fusion and whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it just purely from like a science fiction perspective, with a little of that Independence Day hokiness, um, yes, this is a pretty reasonably okay film. Um, I think it's worth renting. Um, I bought it on Amazon Prime um, because it was just the thing I wanted to see, and I never saw it in the theater. And and I already own the original film uh, so I feel like you know eventually I'll buy the original film on Amazon Prime Video and at least I'll have the group in the collection and then I um, I saw a movie also through Amazon Prime uh, oh, let me just say that the critics and everyone who was complaining about it were right um, <laughs> So let me just bury the lead on that. Um, I, I watched the Ghostbusters, the latest one from 2016 movie. Um, yeah. The thing is just riddled with problems. And, I, and this is not me coming from a perspective of nostalgia uh, bias. Um, I'm not looking at the Ghostbusters franchise and saying, oh, but it's not like... It, it is totally not like. Um, and it is just... It's riddled with uh, names in the production side and on the um, you know on the the actor side mm -hmm. um, it has a bunch of stars in it okay so that's not the downfall for the reason um, could the casting be better probably um, I think that the execution failures were more in the writing and more in the editing um, but the big primary thing for me was the writing the story was just not it just fits the formula of making a film that could be successful if the right chemistry was in place. Um, I I think the the comedic chemistry was not there. The beats were not hit, mm. and maybe that's me comparing back to the original Ghostbusters, how they kind of just flowed very well. Yeah. Um, and there's something to be said about the direction and maybe even the writing of that. And this was incredibly missing in this film, mm. and not making one to one exchange between the comparisons uh, it just was missing well and one of the one of the interesting observations that a, a friend of mine had about the old and new Ghostbusters movies was that in the old Ghostbusters movies if you watch the ensemble the interesting thing is that everybody's weird but at different times mm -hmm. like if you would take a look at at any one particular scene like there's this one scene where Bill Murray is the straight man and Aykroyd and Ramis are playing off of him and then mm -hmm. other scenes mm -hmm. where all of a sudden Bill Murray is is getting to to deliver the yep. jokes, and Harold Ramis is like you know being sort of like stoically autistic as a straight man opposite him. Mm -hmm. And they they said that when they watch the new movie, there's no chemistry. Well, the, not that they they weren't uh, good comedians, but they but nobody was playing the straight man. Right, everybody hmm. was, was being weird. Was was doing jokes all the time, and, yep. there, and then there was no mm -hmm. contrast. To, to say, oh, well, that's a funny thing as opposed to everyone's just being weird. And, and unless they give them the freedom to improv and mm -hmm. that's what got in the film, um, if that was not true and it was just all in the writing, then I think the, the issue here was the writing. The chemistry mm -hmm. was just, the, the comedic beats were not built in um, correctly. There was no balance. It was just all over the place. Yeah. Uh, the, well, maybe it is editing. I mean, uh, comedy is so heavily dependent mm -hmm. on timing. Um, the other thing is, I think you had a lot more musical filler mm -hmm. throughout the Ghostbusters that helped you, it was like the fifth character that kind of moved you along mm -hmm. in moments uh, of the film and the comedic timing, just like remember Bill Murray uh, Dr. Venkman is like shocking the guy and flirting <laughs> with the girl you can clearly get a lot 
of knowledge about his character without yeah. him saying a lot. And it's not because Bill Murray's a great actor or a great comedian. Nothing to do with that. It has to do with the writing, the timing, it's, and the editing. It's all with the bits yep. of business. And, um, and, Tommy Lee Jones is good with bits of business, yeah, too. And, and so this movie lacked that for all four characters. Mm. Um, and things that could have cut out that were just odd in the moment weren't funny. Uh, um, the Holtzman, I look at her and go, okay, she is probably, you know, she's doing like maybe the best job, um, uh, as but but there were a couple moments of her being odd as a character that could just little be edited out and it wouldn't wouldn't mm-hmm. fall in the moment it didn't that add was already to her character. Yeah, it it just threw everything out of balance again, mm. um, and so. Uh, it didn't need a resolve, and so I think that's the problem with it: is that this thing was in writing hell, and and this was the best <laughs> thing they could do. Maybe maybe it had nothing to do with the writers. Maybe it had to do with the movie machine screwing it up. Um, I, I don't know. I think the idea was that when you start seeing the film open, it says Ghost Corpse, so clearly mm. they were intending to do something better. So maybe they'll make another film without this group. Um, and they'll do it with somebody else. Like, they'll do it with a different group of, of, of characters and maybe make those corrections. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're making a second film, you know, reboot film or not, under the idea or the context of which they were going to try to build this sort of I, Ghostbuster universe. I don't know why they, they bothered to do a new Ghostbusters movie. I, I thought the, the original they, Ghostbusters was fine, the sequel was <laughs> mm-hmm. mediocre, and they should have just left it there. Um, Wasn't there, like, talk for effort about third one? And yeah, they, they did. Yeah, there was talk about doing another one with the, third, with the original cast, but I don't see why you would do the third movie without the original cast. And, mm-hmm. you know, well, Harold Ravis died in 2014. Yeah, and, and yeah. Then plus, you know, Bill Murray, I guess, wouldn't away, do it. I know he was... Bill I know Murray's he, doing other things with his career now. And yep. I'm not. I'm not sure what Ackroyd is doing, but I'm sure he's doing other things. Okay, so here's here's another problem mm. that was littered through the movie. Yeah. That was like, okay, it'd be fun if the rest of the movie was like, was was on the right angle and jiving correctly. But this was a thing they should have just cut it out altogether. There were a ton of cameos, mm-hmm. and the ton of cameos were not in their. Um, previous character position. It's like there was a universe of the original Ghostbusters and these characters, these actors or these characters are sort of in the movie, but not really in, oh, that's in, right. in, in I, the I universe. Oh, that's right. I heard they got um, Aykroyd and uh, Murray to, to appear in the new movie. Yeah, Aykroyd, for a scene, Murray. But they're not their old characters. They're nope. just other people. Yep. Um, Sigourney Weaver shows up. Annie Pod shows up. Uh, there's no Rick Moranis. Mm. Um, obviously, no Harold Ramis. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, they had people who were on the original production involved, but it didn't uh, make it for a better movie, unfortunately. So oh well. um, they, they tried. Disappointing, and to me, it has nothing to do with who they cast. Um, I think those individuals have potential. I just don't think it. You know, there's nothing it wrong wasn't with the realized in this movie. No, um, it, it, I think it has to do with the writing and it has to do with the execution. Um, the production value and the filmmaking part of it were just perfect, just yeah. perfectly fine, really good. Um, but it is a two-hour mess. Um, I don't, you know, and I am not taking that from the perspective of complaining. Well, it's not like the old Ghostbusters. I am not. Mm. Um, I just don't think it works as a, a movie. Uh, in this formula, if they change the formula, um, I think it could totally work. Mm. But this would be just, zombies instead of ghosts. No, I, I I think. Oh, there's also a, a Slimer cameo um, out yeah. of context again. Um, I think. I just think someone who can better write this and direct it. Um, would have executed. Maybe it wasn't the director's fault. Maybe it was, again, the movie machine's fault because that was what delayed this ever coming to being for over a decade. Mm. So uh, I don't know where to blame anybody. (laughs) I think it's my blame for actually watching it and putting my roommate through the the suffering of it. Well, did you watch Um, anything else that you enjoyed? I can't remember, but I think so, yes. (laughs) So moving on from all my complaints... 
There's a lot of them. Mm. Uh, Matt, what about you? Anything anything hot? Uh, well, I unfortunately have not been able to get out to the movies this week, which is kind of a disappointment because there's a lot of stuff out right mm-hmm. now that I that I would like to see. I what mean, um, What's out that you want to see? Well, let's see. I've, I've already seen Doctor Strange. I've already seen The That's Accountant. But the new Disney movie, Moana, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see the new Harry Potter movie, oh, Fantastic Mo- Moana. Beasts. Yeah, um, I, um, I'm pretty sure that Colin Luke, that, that their title and their cover art is based on that, so they must be having a conversation about it. <laughs> oh, okay. I've not listened yet. Um, I, I definitely want to see that. I don't know if I have to go to the movie theater to see that. Uh, I like seeing things in the movie theater. That's It's a unique experience. Mm-hmm. And plus, I can get discount t- t- tickets through the Costco. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, what is? Do you remember the name of the movie that has Jennifer Lawrence in it? And um, oh, that's uh, that's a new movie that hasn't come out yet. Yeah, I d- I'm totally interested in seeing that. I, I'm pretty sure it's oh. coming out this month. Or could you describe it, Bill? Um, it's the one where the the two people wake up from passengers. Uh, yeah, the pa- is that's what that's what it's called. Yep. <laughs> that's a, that's the name of the movie, I believe. So yeah, I want to see that. Uh, there's mm-hmm. there's there's movies to see this month. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm I mean, it's, it's to. getting to be uh, Christmas time, yeah. so everyone's on vacation, and the movie theaters are just like, ho, oh, time to pull out the family viewing movies. Yeah. Time we, to shovel shovel out all the Oscar bait. Yeah. It's also with that little indie film, I think it's called Star Wars Rogue <laughs> yes. something or other. <laughs> Rouge something or another. Rouge something, yeah. Fashion models, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out. Oh, you see that, Matt. Now someone's going to have to make it. <laughs> Rule 34 has to exist, I guess. So, um, okay. <laughs> so, anything else uh, aside from movies well, you like no, to I'm, see? I'm looking forward to Rogue One. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. Apparently, it's a, a movie about the, the team of people who actually steal the plans for the Death Star so that the original Star Wars actually happens. Going to be hard on a few baffins then. Ha-ha. Yeah, the the thing is, until until uh, Botas said something about um, you know that this is a side story, this is not a part of the original chapters. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a good idea. We can get more Star Wars without having to worry about the c- canon comparison. Well, to this what's is the interesting thing because now that uh, Disney owns the uh, the Star Wars rights, they've got this plan where they're going to try and do sort of an episode of the Luke Skywalker saga like you know periodically and then the idea is in the off years they're going to do side stories mm-hmm. where like they're doing this thing about you know stealing the plans for the death star and there's another one in the works about like the early life of Han Solo which has the potential to be cool because Han Solo is cool um, we've we've mentioned before you know some of the the really nice Han Solo novels that were done as you know spin-offs back in the day. When yeah, the, if if they if they actually go back into the Brian Daly well, that would be fucking that awesome. Would be nice. But there were I I tried reading some of the modern extended universe Han Solo stuff, and yeah. they were just terrible. Uh, I mean, they were right. so didn't bad. Enjoy them? So bad. Uh. I, I had to stop. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so not a whole lot of stuff happening right now, but there's a lot of stuff on the horizon for me. So that's that's basically what I've been doing. I mean, I can tell you about what I've been watching on YouTube lately, but that's uh, you know, not real yeah. interesting. If there's any particular channels on YouTube that are <coughs> that you discover that might be worthwhile, I think that's sometimes worth uh, mentioning. It's that or you're going to make me seem like a really sucky no, person. <laughs> most, most of the stuff I've been looking at are, are things like, um, you know, top ten things... Like you know, movies where where actors almost got killed, or oh, I got you. horrible oh, yeah. horrible scenes, or goofy stuff that we found in the floor of the ocean. Or I mean, if they're all part of like a particular channel. Like, uh, what are the man. channels? Well, it's uh, there's the richest. There's Talco. Did you ever type in David S. Pumpkins into your YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you should. It's a pretty good. Well, actually, output. I did see one video which was like part three of a series of things you should never Google. Honestly, don't ever look at these. No, things. this is inappropriate. It's it has to help me with Tom Hanks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculously just, stupid. It's, oh, okay. it's funny. just <laughs> it's it's stupid. I did watch your video. And yeah. I saw it. Yeah, I now I know he's his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, that's all you have to say about it. Um, and I'm like looking at it, like that is Tom Hanks. 
<laughs> yes, yeah. that is Tom Hanks through the whole thing. Uh, Good yeah. sport but the, <laughs> to the, do that. The only thing <laughs> is, so like, if you follow me on YouTube and you looked at my like videos, they're all over the place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes they're science, sometimes they're inspirational, sometimes they're just stupid things. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I liked the NLS pumpkins. I hey, that's <laughs> David S. Pumpkins, sir. <laughs> <laughs> or Best David remember his name. Oh, was it you who right. showed me those guys who like love to blow up things in slow motion? Oh, the slow mo guys. Yeah, yeah, that's they're, pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Any questions? <laughs> 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 He's making a pumpkin uh, reference. Okay. Okay. Well, how about you uh, catch up? How how have you been doing this week? <laughs> now make it any more like cavalcade for of condiments. <clears throat> okay, since we're already talking about the YouTube stuff, yeah. So there are two channels. One that I've been meaning to mention for a while that you mentioned the list. I tend to not like the whole sort of like top ten type stuff. But yeah, it's it's sort of a limited format. But <clears throat> there's a channel called Outside Xbox. There's also sort of like a sister channel called Outside Extra, mm-hmm. where they have like. It's not a top. It's just of this stuff, so it's not really in any particular order. So it's order. more basically just sort of a review of things as opposed to we're ranking these. Yeah, and they tend to be, like, gaming-related, like, mm-hmm. five times that video games get car physics horribly wrong. Like, after <laughs> jets, they're not going to actually make a car jet. And, um, not what's it sliding. Um, when you surf, like... Drift. Drift. That's yeah. it. Help, like, drifting, it's oftentimes... And, like eight times the villain actually has a good reason for being a villain or oh yeah those are very interesting there's there's little things like some movies where if you look at them from the villain's perspective the hero is a horrible person <laughs> and i mean there's all sorts of examples like that and the, it's the, it's the british <clears throat> excuse sorry british channel so it's got both like that sort of humor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. side aspect try of it. try humor not necessarily quite dry, but it's a bit different than American, mm-hmm. at least. Right, yeah, the wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they don't just do this, that's just how I start watching them, but they mm-hmm. also sometimes do Let's Plays, but they're not serious Let's Plays. Like, a while ago, we were talking about Farm Simulator 16, mm-hmm. and they had a couple <laughs> of videos, and but they're not seriously playing it. They're essentially, like, the game round in the game for a while. They're kind of trying to do it seriously, and then mm-hmm. they get bored, and they take a train, <laughs> and they try to run over a box just to see what will happen in the game. Yeah, the irony is, I, I, every once in a while, I watch someone else play Minecraft instead of playing Minecraft. <laughs> and it's such a disturbing idea. It's like, why don't I just play Minecraft? <laughs> I mean, you can sometimes learn something. Uh, yeah, and something that, that's, that that's the intention of when I do that, yeah. <laughs> so, again, outside Xbox, outside Extra, they're just kind of fun and silly. They had a couple with, um, uh, what's that sort of, like, Dragon something or other game, the one where it's, like, all sort of, they're remaking for the new uh, Revolution Wii thing. Switch, I mean, that uh, everyone got all excited. Dragon. Are you thinking of Dragon Age? I think so. By Skyrim? Think Skyrim, that's yeah, yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, Sky- yeah. Where they're playing Skyrim, but there's all sorts of mods you could have for the uh, Xbox, I think, yeah. uh, PlayStation 4 version. So there seems to be a catnip mod. <laughs> so they had one of the cat race people, and they went to like find catnip and it makes everything all trippy. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, it's just like you're like doing Let's Plays, but like really unserious Let's Plays. So mm-hmm. I recommend those two channels. Mm-hmm. And besides that, also, there's another channel where. Remember how in the. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when they'd actually go for the Hitchhiker's Guide. It's a bit closer to the more recent movie version than mm-hmm. the OVA TV, not OVA, but the TV version, but still. Hell, they'd have a little animated sequence when they describe something. Oh, yeah, those yeah, are yeah. great. Those are fantastic. Well, mm-hmm. there's a channel that actually does like troop science explanations, uh, but they do. I have a feeling I'm going to know it. Go ahead. In the Hitchhiker's yeah. style? Yeah, I think it's mm-hmm. a Hitchhiker's like Oh, that's like fantastic. Style. Yep. Um, I have no clue how it properly pronounced it, so I guess that's Starts with a K? Yeah, K U R Z G E S A G T in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so it's 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 a really good uh, British sure, guy, right. British voice, and they go through and they don't do them, they don't do them like once a week or once a month. They just do them every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and they have really good scientific based um, animations that are in exactly what you were talking about. Yep. Kurzgesagt. 
Okay. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty pretty interesting stuff, and I think they're also like sponsored by Patreon, so you get exclusive things. Um, you get mm-hmm. more content. Actually, I think that's where they do it, like weekly or monthly, um, through Patreon. So if you yes. Patreon support them, you get in, in you know things that only come through the Patreon. You'll, you'll get a, a pencil holder, and for like ex, you know platinum <laughs> no. level uh, kind of contributions, you, get you can more, have your enemies destroyed. You one get the the value of helping them produce these things because it takes time and money, um, and two, mm. um, you get to see it like weeks before, and I think they usually have additional bits of content that they only give to their Patreon supporters. Oh, like DLC just for the Patreon group. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, well that's nice. Yep. That's a nice extra. Yeah, and there's a lot of YouTubers and channels, you know, that are doing the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a good channel. Yeah, what else? Okay, I only had two YouTube channels to talk oh, okay. about, but <laughs> oh, sorry, it's <laughs> disappointing. Um, but also for a while, and though I'm not sure how much longer they're going to keep showing it, unfortunately I didn't bring it up sooner, but there's a sub-channel on broadcast TV, but that also probably means they'll be on cable and satellite. And I think they also live stream their like TV station online called Comet TV, and on Sundays... Oh, yeah, they, they like have uh, reruns of sci-fi shows. Yes, it's a very sci-fi themed mm-hmm. channel. And so Comet TV, I discovered, is has been showing... It's actually only about 10 to 12 episodes in, like, a loop, unfortunately. Yeah. But of MST3K3... Three, I mean, yeah. The new show? No, no, the classic... The old mis- show, that's okay. Yeah, but they're kind of, like, randomly picked episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000, but still, it's Mystery Science Theater 3000 on Yay. TV, on broadcast TV, which is just fun awesome. to... Awesome. Yeah. They show two episodes back-to-back, again, on Sunday from 8 to, like... 12.30, like, even though it's only supposed to be a two-hour show, they add an extra 15 minutes of commercials padded oh in Oh my god, everyone does that these days, yeah. So, I mean, that kind of really sucks, but still, again, you don't have to pay attention during the commercials. <laughs> you don't offer, like, a premium, like, so pay five bucks a month, you know, the so you ads anymore? They don't no, do it's a, again, okay. it's a broadcast TV station. Oh, 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 it's okay, not a streaming you. service. Sorry, yeah. It's over the air. I was confused. <laughs> yeah, but you can, I think, watch it on their website. Gotcha. like they live stream their channel channel. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. So, Woo. but again, that's just an extra thing. It's mainly for people who have just TVs with an antenna attached gotcha. who aren't using satellite and cable. But again, Mystery Science Theater 3000 and about 10 or 12 episodes. Again, unfortunately, they seem to be repeating the episodes that they've already shown now. And they've already gone through one cycle, so I'm not sure how much longer, but they're going to at least have one or two more weeks of episodes going by their guide. And lastly, there's a movie I saw called The Painting from 2011. It's 3D CG, but it's cell shaded in a sort of unique way to actually make it seem like they're inside of a painting. And it's a uh, French, uh, I want to say a Brussels or collaboration. Okay. And it's only about like an hour and something minutes long, I think, like an hour and. 10 or 15 minutes but it's kind of like if Toy Story except with um, characters in the painting coming to life or what if they were actually alive yeah (laughs) and it's a neat concept but unfortunately it gets a bit bogged down by starting out with sort of class system bullshit where like in this one painting you have characters that are completely painted who have this like sort of treating the characters who aren't actually right. completely painted and those are just sketches like crap <laughs> and a couple of characters that don't like the system discover that they can actually escape the painting and they go to other paintings but screw they're all you I'm going to <laughs> and they just discover other paintings but the paintings are all supposed to be done by the same person so the style doesn't vary as much as it could oh. have Gaia and there's also this whole sort of mild touching on the concept of the painter as God sort of like I don't again there's a, tons of great potential ideals but they all end up being executed in a half-baked fashion they had an initial knee idea and they thought that was enough to just guy the concept will get us there yeah it looks really cool like looking at the trailer like it definitely visually it's impressive mm-hmm. yeah it's sure. got a very interesting style but I felt they could have done even more with it like because there's all sorts of ways people paint so oh, yeah, it's, yeah true so again there's tons of potential but it's mm-hmm. a bit disappointing that they're not fully lived out so I kind of recommend people check it out 
it was, I believe, released by a G Kids, who've released a bunch of animated things in the U.S. Is this really meant for kids? I wouldn't say it's a kids film, though. But <laughs> G Kids has just released a bunch hmm. of animation, like the uh, Secret oh, of Tales, okay. but that's a bit more of a family-oriented thing. But still. Um, but a lot of the uh, anime we've seen recently was actually a G Kids release yeah. as well. Well, I mean, I think that's more in the, the zone. I think this sounds like this wouldn't generally be for their expected profile for, you know, on an audience. I think they just in general try to pick up animation. Mm. <clears throat> but again, I don't know. I don't speak for G-Kids. I don't know their corporate <laughs> policies. But hey, at least they released it, so that's thumbs up that they're right. looking into stuff like this. And again, <clears throat> it's worth checking out because it's different, but it's not going to be something that is curve been as good as a curve been, which is disappointing. But that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just recommend at least check out the trailer you like mm-hmm. yeah. purchased it. And that's it for me. That's enough things I okay. think I brought up. Um, all right. Bryce, what about you? Me? Which oh, one well. go around? <laughs> um, I, uh, I wish I watched some anime this week, but I didn't. I feel bad. We're not talking about anime at all. <laughs> 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 Do you play any games? I did. I oh. finished Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, what did and you think of it? I, I like it. It's better than the first one. Oh, the first good. one of the reboots. So be- better in terms of story, better in terms of gameplay? I think better for gameplay, better for the the violence like for instance like in the first game the first reboot like Laura like is falling off stuff again like impaled on trees like branches and shit like yeah. that and like but then the next scene she's like running around with a gun which I know is a video, <laughs> game, a video game problem a lot of video games have you know easily shooting people uh, but in this one she falls off a lot of things but it's never like gruesome they, they kind of cut that they Aspect tone that down a lot um, <laughs> so and also like the executions are way less gruesome looking too so they, I think they've dialed that back and they, they saw some criticism for that in the first game and I think it's nice that they tried to rail that back a bit. <laughs> so is it cutscene heavy, or um, is it no? It's not too cutscene heavy. More or less yeah. driven with from action within the game. Um, no, it's not too cut, cutscene heavy. Um, there are cutscenes, um, like flashbacks to her. Ah, okay, it's gotcha. about like her father. And her, the story's kind of like her father believed this thing existed, and he died a man disgraced because that you know it can't be true, and you know he's crazy. And Laura's like, <laughs> I gotta find it and prove my dad was not crazy. <laughs> His name is actually Lord Croft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, and, oh but she's in a race with this other group called Trinity, which does believe this thing exists. It's like the secret to immortality, and you know, Whatever. there you go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's a fun game though. But, um, they have this element of like crafting on the fly, so it's like you kind of grab a bottle and you run from cover to cover. Um, you know, and you craft like a Molotov cocktail as you run, and then you know chuck it over and burn someone alive. <laughs> um, once again, not gruesome. Just I mean, it's gruesome in nature, but not like. You're not seeing like detail of their like skin melting off or anything. Just unhappy people. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's a cool. It's, it's a cool game. Um, it's a cover-based shooter uh, at its core, but it's also a lot of pl- um, climbing and like sort of like platforming. Um, they really cut back on the quick time events too in this one, which I really appreciated. Like everything that would be a quick time event is actually more of a mechanic. So it's like you know you have this like grappling hook that you have, you know they don't say press this button they say you look up and you see the thing a grappling hook can hit, hit and you hit it there mm-hmm. um, so I, I appreciate that a little more than to say like press X and then oh, <laughs> you okay. won't die <laughs> it's more it's a little more like I guess like natural like you sort of know what the things that your grappling hook can grapple onto and stuff like that or the walls what walls look like you can hook into uh, stuff like that um, so I, I definitely check it out um, I mean the first reboot I thought was good too but this one I think is a little more this one's really well made and a little more special than I think the first one was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The first one felt like a very well made game, but not really anything that like I would say is like stand out about it. This one I think do a better job. So, so this is definitely an improvement over the original yeah. and well, over the original Tomb Raider games. I hated yeah. those games, but, <laughs> the, the, the fir- but, the, but the first uh, reboot, yes, it's an improvement over that as well. Yeah, okay, uh, good. But I still think the first reboot's worth playing if you you know want more mm-hmm. of it. I think this is technically a prequel because it's Rise of the Tomb Raider. But uh, I don't think you need to play that one to understand what's going on in this one. There's not—I didn't recognize any references to the other reboot, the first reboot at all. So, do you play this on your PS4? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's available on PC too. It looks good on the PS4. I'm sure it looks better on PC. Um, mm-hmm. Really good hair. Hair really flows well. It's very yeah, natural. Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> I hear that is like one of the things people use for benchmarks when they're testing out graphic cards hair, and yeah. stuff like that, and, and the performance on the PC. Yeah, it's it's beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Titanfall 2 multiplayer. I've been playing that kind of mm. off and on all week. Um, it's really good. Uh, a lot of good about the like about the loop around on the progression. So. 
I have to like unlock everything again. I want to, you know, if I want to do that, I don't know what the reward is. Some, I'm sure some vanity item I have. Like I, you know, prestige. They don't call it prestige. That's what they call it in Call of Duty. But mm. same kind of premise. Um, but you like it's cool. You're constantly unlocking things and new weapons. The Titans are all different and play very differently. Close range Titans, farther range Titans. Um, it's cool. Like you, it's called Titanfall because you're dropping your Titan in from the sky and it's just like it crashes and actually will kill anybody under it. <laughs> uh, and then you like sort of jump into it, but the some of the ways you jump into it, like depending on what direction you're coming from, it will change. And like a cool way is like the Titan will like grab you and like put it you in its stomach, and like that's how you get into the Titan. <laughs> it's, uh. it's cool. And, um, <laughs> nice. and then you know you're in the Titan. Um, people can like ride you. Like you can have a, a like a, a teammate ride you and like you know provide support fire or like an enemy can get on your back and take your battery and your shield will go down and stuff like that. So it's a it's cool. Um, and there's also AI units around the map, so it's like a lot of stuff is popping off all the time. Um, um, and a lot of like the objectives is to like you know kill more, get points by killing your a- AI enemies, and then you get more points if you kill another player. But it's cool that there's always constantly stuff going on. Mm. You usually are shooting somebody, even if it's a dumb AI guy. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. How how smart is the AI? And not like not really. In this. <laughs> are they like really scripted, repeatable patterns? In the campaign, they're fine, but in, in like the, the in the context of the multiplayer, like they're just there to like sort of like you harvest them kind of more as a resource. Like you get money for killing them, and then you get points for that. And Gaia. you want to do that before the enemies do that to you, your team or the enemy team of players. It's player right. versus player still. Gaia. And though that's always going to be a smarter AI, obviously, at least now. Somewhere in the future, AI will be smarter than us. Um, That's how Skynet forms from yeah. <laughs> being used in video games and slowly improving. <laughs> Uh, and then I, I I got after Team Raider I had had like a itch to be like you know exploring and um, going into places and tombs and treasures. So I got back into Uncharted Four, yeah. and I like it. But I'm having a real problem is that the uh, the square and the triangle, which are two buttons, are flipped in Tomb Raider. So one's oh, melee I and one's hate reload. That so, so much. I hate that and so I, much. I blame Uncharted because the square has always been reloaded in almost every shooter I've ever played on a PlayStation game. But they made a triangle, and <laughs> and I can't change it. And it's, oh, uh, damn. so it has me like throwing punches, but I mean to like replace my clip of ammo. So uh, that game is really good looking as well. Um, you know, it's a first party game, so they know how to get the best out of their system. Um, but you know, it's a fun tale. Nathan Drake, you know, doing his thing. So <laughs> so how open is are the Uncharted games? So I. I no, they're very station. linear. Charlie games are very linear. Gotcha. They're they're kind of like a roller coaster ride with like you know really good set pieces. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, a little bit more emphasis on stealth in this one, but once again, if you kind of mess up the stealth, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> if you're with, and uh, honestly, you're uh, Nathan's usually with his brother so far in the in the game, and they do a good job of like making him be like helpful too, and like staying at, like. He doesn't like run out, and the AI doesn't like see him all the time. In fact, the AI never reacts to him. But he they do a good job of like making it look like he's constantly hiding as well. So it feels more like you're with somebody, even though it's an AI. Um, mm-hmm. That said, like if he is caught out in the open, you will not your stealth is going to get blown. Like there's going to be moments where you're, that's going to break a little bit the immersion. But um, that's a very linear game. Tomb Raider is much is like open, more open in the areas you can sort of explore. So they're kind of different things in a lot of ways. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't, one or the other, I think they're both good. Um, Uncharted 4 is good so far, but I haven't finished it, so I can't say for sure. Gotcha. And then I guess I read a Bruni comic called Descender. I brought it up if, if I wants to flip yeah. through the book. Oops, yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, this is like uh, kind of a story similar to Mass Effect. Um, basically, the you know robotics have advanced very far in the far flung future, and all of a sudden, these like giant robots, call, they called them harvesters, showed up, and no one knows like what the heck they were or where they came from. And they end up like destroying like eighty percent of like the like living population of the universe, <laughs> that known universe. Um, and they kind of blame it t- on robotics in general, and it becomes like this kind of anti-robotic um, movement. And then it sort of um, stars this kid robot who wakes out of like you know his stasis. He's Tim Twenty One, and he's um, sort of gets hunted down by these like because uh, there's like you know. There's uh, bounties on robots everywhere, so scrappers mm. are constantly chasing them down because everybody hates robots in this world. <laughs> and they sort of get the do- the doctor who first, you know, who's considered like the top guy of robotics to sort of like because something about Tim Twenty One is very specific. He was kind of like the first thing that um, the first model that this doctor built, and he's probably the only one left of his kind. And they want to use him to study in case the harvesters do come back, and if there is a connection. Mm. Uh, the storytelling is pretty good. Um, you want to take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, the art style, actually, I really like, too. Um, it has kind of like a, almost like a watercolor look to it. In, in yeah, places. I really like the yeah. art. Yeah, it's very... It's cool. I read the first two volumes. Um, it, it moves. Like, it's not... It's it's 
things happen, so it's definitely worth checking out. It's a continuing film. series? Yes. Oh. Um, it, well, I just finished uh, the second um, uh, trade paperback. The third just came out, I think, early November, so... Um, it's still going, and I, I guess you can read it monthly. But I'm kind of in this point with American comics that I kind of want just trade paperbacks. Yeah, it's just yeah. A, I don't want to collect like single comic books. It's too much effort, and I think they look cooler on the shelf anyway. Um, so I check it out. It's Image Comics. Um, a lot of good stuff coming from that uh, publisher. I'm finding. Yeah, I like days, like so. the art style. Yeah. So that's it for me. <laughs> okay, Paul. What about you? What about me? Okay, I'm afraid I have to confess that I have also watched exceptionally limited anime this past oh, week, no. by which I mean none. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I finally got my office all reassembled after oh, yeah. the the cleaning I discussed last week, mm. and uh, yeah, I was just gotta kind be of, done. Kind of drained. Gotta be done. Uh, yeah. and I still have like uh, 15 pounds of cables sitting in some <laughs> right. bags that I don't know what they were attached <coughs> to, but they were attached to something at one point, so now I just have 15 <laughs> pounds of cables and all this. these yeah. are things I've removed I, from my desk. I ordered more surge protectors. One, I needed for work, but I know when I go through this process, I'm going to relieve like a half dozen surge protectors under my desk. Yeah, but, but it's nice. I got everything like uh you know um velcroed up to the little bars running mm. under the table so nothing for the cat to chew on under there now yeah uh-huh. i do you have a and is that what you do you get a little hook and loop things for for the cable management yeah What's your so plan i just like I, I think i've ended up using like i'm up around like 30 or 40 of these things at this yeah. point <laughs> and i try to like do the data ones separately from the power ones because uh, particularly okay. for like audio cables that'll yeah uh, you don't I, want I mean lead stuff through. My yeah. cable management solution for at least the studio was these little orange clamp things that I bought years ago. Um, but, I mean, you know, they're good, but they allow me to kind of unclamp things real easily very quickly and reline stuff through it. So, yeah. uh, I don't I don't know. If you have a recommendation for a solution by the time I get to this next weekend, let me know. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look under your desk, see what it looks like after we're done uh, here. Uh, uh, you yeah. don't want to look under yeah, the desk. Under That's the, the point. Desk. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, along running along the top. I mean, if there's like a... So, like, mine's mm. got metal bars along the top. But there's just enough space to, like, slip a cable tie through there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so. hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I, I, had thought about, I had thought about a number of things. I want to remove a lot of the junk underneath there. I want the power management solution yeah. to be easy. But I do have AV stuff running through there. Not much as as much anymore. Um, yeah, I'll th- I don't know. Yeah. I haven't thought about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so primitive. There's so many wireless standards. I mean, there's even wireless electric <clears throat> <clears throat> power so, <clears throat> solutions yeah, now. So not, not going to happen. Yeah, no, <laughs> not going to I mean, happen for a while. If, you, if you're talking like, for example, the the problem with this board is that the interface card that's connected to the board that channels all of you guys. Um, it is just a little too far away from the primary system. So unless they move that somewhere closer by, I can't connect these two things together. Now you can um, do it all through Bluetooth. I hear you can do everything through Bluetooth now. <laughs> well, first thing, you, you don't want to because of latency. Um, and that's in your data pipeline and it's your AV stuff. So that's not something you want to do. Uh, even with, like, Wi-Fi direct things. He um, sounds so serious when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had to tell the audience. He is no, obviously don't do just trolling. Yes. Yeah, I know he's trolling. But I'm just saying, is like it's a thing I will never consider doing. <laughs> so, all right. So I don't have actually have any anime to discuss. I'll do better next week, I promise. Um, I do have a couple of games that I uh, will mention that I've been playing the past week. Uh, first of all, I found my discs for Simpsons Hit and Run. Mm. Oh, really? Which was I can't remember if it's 2001 or 2003. I think a console so, or a PC. This or, is the PC yeah. version. So. Is this sort of a Simpsons skin for Crazy Taxi? No, that was like the Thought, that was the right? first one. Oh. Uh, wrote Road Rage. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I played that because yeah. I had a roommate who bought that for the PS4 and he never played it and I played it. <laughs> I uh, for the PS4. So this is actually more... Or PS2, not PS4, PS2, or PS2 yeah. right. I, I, <laughs> I meant four. PlayStation. It's an even number. Yeah. Right. We were talking about the 4 yeah. earlier, so... <laughs> yeah, so Simpsons Hit and Run is definitely Grand Theft Auto inspired. Oh. So it's mission based. Uh, you have, I think there's like three or four separate levels of Springfield that you can drive around in each one. Um, Usually structured in a loop. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you if, if there's not a mission on, you can drive around. There's all sorts of unlockables buried around. And so I think of all the games out there, this is probably the game I have 100%ed the most. 
Really? So I like, gotten all the collectibles. So Yay. yeah. So that's what I did like basically on Sunday into Monday was just a 100% Simpsons hit and run again. Yay. And I discovered that there is a, a, a something out there called I think it's Lucas's Hit and Run Lod, Mod Launcher or something like that. <laughs> uh-huh. But regardless, it will actually set it up for a proper uh, widescreen mode. So this was ah. running in 1920 by 1200 mode. Um, very smooth and and actually fixes mm. a few of the problems. There's a group out there which has actually done like an update mod for Simpsons Hit and Run, which I tried. Mm-hmm. So it like f- it's supposed to fix a lot of the problems with the oh, missions. Oh, did it release with bugs? Well, so like this game is super janky. Like I have no idea why yeah. I actually like this game so much. <laughs> I mean, some of the the races are just horribly unfair. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. But but nonetheless, you know, at this point, I've beaten it so many times that like it takes me like three or four times to get the worst you of know the races. what the, the thing about it is it was a simpsons theme and that was the only tie-in for me <laughs> yeah but yeah. but but this uh mod it just felt wrong uh so i might go back and try it now that i've actually played through the game properly again mm-hmm. but like there's there's tips out there that i've never seen written down for like how you opt play this game optimally. For example, there's all these um, vending machines and boxes around for Buzz Cola, which you uh, can kick and destroy. But you can, if you, uh, and you get coins for them. And you need to collect coins to unlock the various unlockables, particularly cars and outfits throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Except if you only kick these boxes and machines twice, they don't actually break, which means as soon as you complete another mission, they're still there. But if you click them a third time, you, they're, they're gone forever. So, uh, another one, just like a minor optimization, is like if you jump on top of your car before getting in, in you don't have to go through the entering animation, which uh, speeds mm-hmm. up the play, so stuff like that. So if, if I were ever to make a fact for a game, it would probably be <laughs> Simpsons Hit and Run. Do they have all the, like, is it voice, like the voice actors you want are there? Or yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah great, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Thank I mean, you. and it's, uh, you know, a lot of masked references from, like, the early Simpsons. You gotcha. so, cool. like, Maybe you should, like, see if you can speed run it yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah I should, I should maybe give it a try if you're looking at gentlemen ways to get into cars faster you're kind of halfway through speed running <laughs> at this point that's probably <laughs> true yeah all righty so um what else um ah so the other game that i finally sank deep into was ftl mm-hmm. so ftl was a 2012 rogue like like game uh from <laughs> subset games so rogue likes if you're not familiar with them these are in games inspired by the very old school ascii based game rogue from the original um or back from mainframe days more yeah. or less VT-100 terminal, yo. Yeah, so you've got like little ASCII characters representing a map on the screen, and you move your little at symbol around. Uh, But they're typically characterized by uh, procedural generation of the world. So, you know, things are random and different every time you go in uh, to greater or lesser extents. Mm -hmm. And permadeath is another big one where if you die, that is it. (laughs) And your run ends, and you have to start over from scratch each time. So hardcore man. Yeah. So um, in the, in 2012 was probably about the time when some of these, uh, particularly the procedural generation stuff, started to bleed out into you know the rest of the indie gaming market uh, and permadeath. And so now you see a lot of stuff which is called roguelikes, and like mm. people who actually played roguelike games were kind of cheesed at this. So they <laughs> are typically the sort of uh, related games, things like uh, Binding of Isaac or Rogue Legacy, which is a platformer, get called either roguelike likes or rogue lights but FTL is sort of a space sim Uh, you are flying a spaceship through space except it's basically just like a little overhead view of a spaceship and you've got your crew and you've got your systems in various rooms and you can open doors and click on things and make your crew run around and every time you jump to a new system like some little event happens like you know Mm. there's so it's it's, you know Star Trek type stuff you know there's a, a crisis on a space station and you know, you can either intervene or not, except your choices are basically one or two. One, intervene. Two, do not. <laughs> um, and as you, and so you, the responses to this are more or less random. Uh, so it sometimes can feel a little unfair because sometimes it's like, yeah, you just lost one of your crew members, one of your carefully uh, raised crew members. Uh, but nonetheless... He owed uh, me five bucks. <laughs> yeah. 
the other interesting mechanic for this is, uh, along with these gener- randomly generated sectors of space, you also have the Rebel Fleet, which is pursuing you as you carry your Federation data. Uh-huh. And the Rebel Fleet is represented by sort of a curved red line, which every time you make a jump advances slightly across the sector. Uh-oh. So you just have to keep moving forward so the Rebel Fleet doesn't catch up with you. Ouch. And if it catches up with you, it doesn't kill you immediately, but you have to engage in a dangerous and unproductive fight that you get basically no resources for. Hmm. Ow. So, yeah, over the start of this week, week, I probably died like 12 to 15 <laughs> times playing this. And you, you, <laughs> you, you die pretty fast in this, so well, you can... Your uh, ship was just on fire a moment ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, I was playing one before this, and like everything was on fire, and the medical bay was down. Uh, I, the, the, happily, this game life support was still surviving, but uh, there was just no way to... We'll stay breathing until we burn to death. <laughs> yeah, but everybody had already been damaged by some borders on the ship mm-hmm. so there was there was just no way out of that one uh, but actually i finally after like many 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 deaths managed to make it all the way to sector seven <laughs> uh, and i think i can't remember sector I, i've never made it to the end like sector eight or sector nine is the final um boss fight that you have to survive mm. uh, which i was expecting to die through anyway but that that game where i made it to sector seven was actually like super tense like i was down to like one or one to three hull points several Ooh. times i lost like it was down to a single crew member, including one who I had had been the person who I had rescued from slavers previously. <laughs> so, so you, you know, sort of the the way this game works randomly, it generates some very nice stories. Um, you know, it, it's pretty simple and straightforward in a lot oh. of ways, uh, but um, the way all of its systems interact is just very satisfying from a play perspective. Oh, that's so. Good. This is a game that had been sitting my queue probably since 2012, and I'd like had <laughs> dipped into it a couple of times, and it just is not a very friendly interface. Mm. Uh, but I finally like sat down and spent the time to get into it. I'm really glad that I have. So this is probably one that I will be playing for for years after this. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. I should play it too. I probably had it in my queue since yeah, 2012 yeah, I mean, as well. It's, it's, it's hard to get into, but you know, once once you've sort of got the the basic things that let you survive. So if you can get your shields upgraded as fast as possible, um, big that, help there. Big help because mm-hmm. that really decreases the amount of damage you take. So instead of like mm-hmm. running around fighting fires and patching holes in your hull, uh, you can actually you know then start to get better weapons, get your crew trained up so they aren't dying constantly, <laughs> so they can actually evade and stuff like that so after you've learned the ropes then that if you read a guide to sort of Mm -hmm. show you um how not to die stupidly going bob go fix life support oh damn he's dead yeah exactly (laughs) you yourself are getting better per run not so much yeah you're not leveling up and then going to the stronger ship you're just yeah exactly so so there are some unlocks for this game so as if you uh, complete various special events if you you know do sort of achievement like things you do get different ships unlocked so there's a bunch of races there's mm-hmm. the slugmen there's the zoltan stuff like that uh, and and you get ships unlocked for each of them that have sort of like different gameplay strategies associated with them but they aren't necessarily more powerful right. but they sort of give you different styles of approaching the game cool. so it gives you sort of a feel of improvement but yeah you're, you're right it's really more about you getting mm-hmm. better at playing the games and anything else yeah yeah i mean i like i like roguelikes so i guess i tend to like roguelites a little bit more yeah. <laughs> but um yeah. Try. yeah you mentioned rogue legacy like Le- rogue legacy was good yeah it was cool um i should probably play i yeah, finish it up or something yeah. <laughs> that's a different mm-hmm. game though. uh yeah so i guess the other one i played was abzu but maybe i'll save that for la- next week since i uh have talked a lot already okay so. um so we're moving on and we we do have something from bernhard uh Ooh. this i don't know if it's this month if it's going to be this year <laughs> Uh, I, I have no idea, but we'll we'll find out right now. It's you were so dumb that it's smart. Here's something from Bernhard. Greetings, OG crew. Bernhard here, emerging from my tryptophan coma to be slightly pissed off at Setsucon. January 21st <laughs> through 22nd, 2017, in the Toft Trees Golf Resort and Conference Center in State College, Pennsylvania. Okay, actually, pissed is a little too strong. I'm tinkled off at them. Uh, well, first of all, because I had hoped to do a panel or two or three, and they said that if you haven't filled out your panel application, yet. Be sure to do so before the deadline. Sunday, November 27th, 2016 is the last day that panel applications will be accepted for SetsuCon 2017. So I click on there on uh, Sunday, uh, November 27th, and it says 
panel applications are closed. Two possibilities here. Either they're accepting panels on a first-come, first-served basis and they're full, which seems kind of unlikely as panel notifications don't start until the middle of December, or they worded it incorrectly. I mean, April 17th is tax day next year, and that means that you have to get your taxes postmarked on or before the 17th of April. But I, I can't help thinking they could have done this a little better. You know, maybe made that uh, click here thing more prominent, or you know, maybe just um, just giving you the form right there instead of, um, yeah, I don't know. Also, I forgot to make a joke about how they started the days in and then moved to the Scanicon, and I didn't have time to do that joke, so I won't. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Burdock. All right, um, so uh, we got some feedback, and uh, here we go. It's the fun of the show, where they talk about the show for half of the show. It's the feedback. It is indeed, and Matt's got it. So uh, why don't you read it? Uh, we got some feedback from Simon, who says, Hi, OG crew. I wanted to take a couple minutes off from packing for my first trip for my new job. I leave for Bangkok this evening to say mm. congratulations on reaching episode 600. Assuming an hour per episode, and that's very conservative for you folks, huh. that would be 25 days straight of listening to OG if you ran them in order. Um, it's been great to laugh with you, learn from you, and to meet and hang out with you all through my time listening to this show. I didn't write in as much these days because of life, but I still listen every week and I'm looking forward to seeing you around Otakon this summer. Uh, assuming work doesn't get in the way. Uh, my anime group wrapped up Eden of the East, which we really enjoyed. Um, I heard it had a bad ending, but really, other than a few minutes in the episode, we quite enjoyed it. Right now, we're re-watching Silver Spoon, because I paid Aniplex way too much money for the show, and some of our members hadn't seen it. It really stands up well on a rewatch, so I'm glad I bit the bullet and paid for the, the DVDs. I had meant to write in when you were talking about Stranger Things, which I quite enjoyed, having grown up, a, grown up as a D&D playing kid in the 80s, and Doctor Strange, which I took my older son to and we mostly enjoyed, although we found Stephen Strange to be really a little too unsympathetic, and his cloak was sometimes inappropriately slapsticky. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, that's about it for geeky things here. Thanks again for all you do in putting out this show every week, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Two Thanks, good Simon. points about the <laughs> Doctor Strange. So yes, he's. I think it's more of the way um, you know um, the actor kind of executed it. Uh, and now the next time I watch the movie, I'm gonna have to watch Cape <laughs> more, more intimately <laughs> than I was uh, the first time I saw it. So um, okay, I <clears throat> kind of have to like wonder: mm. Did they just like watch to the end of the series, or did they also watch the movies for? Um the anime they just finished watching. Silver Spoon? No, no, the other one. East of the East. Yeah, East of the East. They watched the movies as well. I'm curious. Uh, he doesn't say anything about the movies. I know. I just heard you say the email, so I'm just seeing like, if he mm. listens to the podcast. Yes. And then so maybe so I, guess, I guess you'll get an answer from <laughs> Simon eventually. Um, okay. I think we're going to run a break. There's um, a cricket. We were talking about that. Oh, yep, okay. Yeah, oh, no. Right invasion of the crickets. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. We're going to run a break, and we'll be back in just a moment. This is Derek the Red, and you're listening to the one and only Otaku Generation. And we're back from break uh, with this week's topic, which is... Super Mario Brothers. Pichahime Kyushutsu Dai Sakusen, or Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, what you said. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so what do we need to know? This just... is a 1986 61-minute theatrical release to cash in on the popularity of the Mario video games, which were super hot stuff in Japan in the 1980s. In but 1985, we... specifically. Yes. No one knows about Mario anymore, <laughs> though. But <laughs> did you people also watch the three OVAs? I watched thing? one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so an anime. I watched whatever you, you sent us to go watch. So I actually put both up, but I um, commented on that. There was, there was something that was just the credits, right? And so, yeah. Anyway. Um, so the first the first movie that was this is based off Mario Super Mario Brothers the n first one right? nominally yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so this is this, so this those enemies are featured you're not gonna yeah. see uh, um, I heard like I one of the write ups said that that's might be actually a bit more tied to the second Japanese Super Mario because we have the uh, mushrooms that also cause ill effects mm. oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There, what we, we call the lost levels yeah, when they came over here yeah, yeah there's a there's a this is, in my opinion, it's mostly interesting to people who really like Mario and want to mm -hmm. watch an anime of it. And have no self-respect. <laughs> uh, the 
The, from what I've seen of it, it's very simplistic. The animation is not good. The humor is like targeted <laughs> at six year olds, even for a cartoony video game. Oh, but it's, they, not, it's not like toilet humor, it's just uh, dumb no, humor. It's just, <laughs> but it's incredibly generic and slapsticky. There's no consistent characterization for the for the people. Uh, Luigi's a greedy What's, mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is a weird like trait to give him because he never shows that ever in any other thing I've seen. Yeah. Any yeah. time he has a personality. And I mean, even for for what little canon there was at the time, the characters don't really ring true to themselves. But they got the whole thing about that all the blocks and enemies are actually residents of the Mushroom Kingdom that yeah, were turned that's, into. That's weird, yeah. But that's actually was part of the original like book instruction stuff. Oh, was the original it? Mario. Yeah, know, that's okay. actually the actual proper original Mario story was <laughs> that. Like the evil magic actually turned all the residents into those very blocks and stuff that you're destroying mm-hmm. as you're playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is what this came out well before any of the like you know the Super Mario Bros. Super Show or any Mario like the RPGs you know, games yeah. that gave Mario a personality and other characters like, like character basically because I mean at this point Mario is he's Jump Man basically he was called Jump Man but he's yeah. still just the, Jump Man. It's the adventures of Jump Man, aka Mario and his brother. But they're not even plumbers in the movie. They're like no, they're they own a grocery store. <laughs> 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 so the or, items that are being ordered at the grocery store it seems more like a general store than an actual grocery store. They're still not plumbers <laughs> though, which I think is really. <laughs> <laughs> weird thing to not like have <laughs> um. so, so so an interesting thing here is I've seen claims that this is in fact the first uh, movie based on a video game yeah. and it certainly set the tone yeah. for yes. its illustrious many, successors many disappointments to follow yeah, yeah. both anime and otherwise <laughs> but I think this is actually closer to the original material than most video game movies are and, and, you, and I mean, that's actually a fair point because you know they do have these side shots that look kind of like you know Mario running along the uh, along the platforms I think that's mm-hmm. very self conscious <laughs> yes <laughs> Bowser steals the princess Mario yeah. goes to save her <laughs> and, and you get like you know a lot of minor enemies cropping up, you yeah. know. Goombas, Hammer Brothers, they're all there. Yeah, the Hammer Brothers shows up. <laughs> yeah, but the bloopers. But the stuff is that a really is, big blooper. It's an anime <laughs> of a video game, and we we've gone over this ground before in adaptations from one medium to another. But stuff that works in the original medium shouldn't be directly transposed <laughs> into a new medium. It it just doesn't flow properly. In in an OAV, you expect something more than just a mission to be accomplished at the end. It did you, have a kind of interesting twist ending. <laughs> yeah, that's another that weird, lame yeah. thing. <laughs> where did yeah, that dog thing come from? <laughs> yeah. with the, the whole time. Oh, that was yeah, not a, not a yeah, cutting so they, addition. When, yeah, if, if you watch this thing, Mario and Luigi go off to rescue the princess from Bowser, and along the way they pick up this like dumb dog thing mascot character, which... Kind of just, reminds me of the dog from Popeye. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just sort of like dog. there. It's so almost caterpillary too. It's like segmented. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's got a weird character design. It just sort of like hangs around for the whole movie, occasionally doing stuff, and then at the end, it turns into a prince and marries Peach. <laughs> All right, I gotta know. So, Spoilers. so, <laughs> oh man, Botas, how do you feel about the puppy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indifferent because it reminds me again too much. It's not really a dog. I forget what it's called, but do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Popeye? The, the Jeep character. Yeah, in that's Popeye it. cartoons. Uh, yeah, but the problem with the dog is it's got like a clown nose. <laughs> it does. There's like a, you know clown nose that you mm-hmm. want to squeeze, um, where you're expecting to to blink or something. I, I don't know. It just mm. doesn't seem right. I thought Luigi's color scheme is also a little weird. Oh yeah, yellow, yellow and yellow. Blue. Yeah, Off model. Why yellow. I don't. He was green in the original Mario Brothers, right? I, think, <laughs> I want to say he was always green. Yeah, for for a character that has like like maybe three defining characteristics, his overalls and his his shirt are two of them. Yeah, and also apparently he just like he's. Will there be any monetary compensation to this journey? <laughs> like, it's like they decide to, like make him the really greedy one, and Mario's out for the true love uh, and they're doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay, so um. Probably because you know more Japanese than I do. Mm. Were they actually saying Triforce in oh, that? Oh, man. You know, there were a couple of points where I, I was actually watching this for the first time tonight. Mm-hmm. If I had been watching it by myself, there were a couple points I would have jumped back to see exactly <laughs> what the Japanese <laughs> was. Okay, I'm curious. That was one of them. Triforce was one of them. And the other was Mario Sprinkles because I was really <laughs> curious to see no, if the yeah. Mario Sprinkles were going to be called Shurikake or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, to say Triforce in a Mario movie, that, that, that carries a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, Nintendo fans. Uh, make so, making some uh, comments out loud when that say, came like, up. Wait a minute, what? So the flower, the star, of the mushroom are the, actually the Triforce? <laughs> Does it grant a wish? <laughs> I better make sure this is actually in the Zelda chronology. <laughs> um, they were called twins in this movie, which I don't think that's Ooh. ever been confirmed. So, like, the prophecy was, oh. like, twin brothers would appear in the world, one of the world, and say... Well, they have twin mustaches, I guess. I, mean, I yeah. always assume Luigi was the younger brother. Right. I, uh, yeah, me too. At one point, not that not that long ago, uh, some of you probably didn't know better, like, put out a press release about a game coming out, like, Mario and his twin brother Luigi, and the Twitter, like, freaked out. Oh. <laughs> they were like, what the hell? They're twins? And they were like, I think it was just some guy who, like, did it probably worked for Nintendo of America and didn't know the significance of saying that meant. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, they call them twins in this movie. In this movie yeah. Well, they, they, the, the uh, wiki claims that they are fraternal twins. Yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. So this is Aww. apparently canon. Mm-hmm. But, so, right, I mean, but he are, is younger. I, I definitely have known twins that literally one is like older by all of seven minutes kind of well, thing. Fr- fraternal twins. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so. I yeah, I didn't know that was the case. Okay. Yeah, yeah but uh, what else is it? Oh, Luigi is taller than Mario in this. That's, that's pretty much that, that, the case. That's, is that, that been the point about the time that became canon? Yeah, because okay. yeah, they're just sprite palette swaps in the game, but yeah. they yeah. are they do they differentiate. Mario's like the shorter, fatter one, and Luigi's the taller. They're yeah, the tall, skinny one. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the most interesting thing about this this OAV is not actually in watching it, but sort of like all the clues that you get out of it. It has. Um, sort of foreshadowing of things that would appear in later games yeah. because this was made with the consultation of the guy who created Super Mario Brothers. So I think that whatever ideas he might have been incubating for future games got you know trial balloons in this OAV or yeah, movie. Yeah, and really far off games. Like, you notice the way he beat Bowser at the end was swinging mm. him around by his tail. And yeah. that's how you beat Bowser at all the boss fights in mm. Super Mario 64. Yeah, which wouldn't but, appear for years yeah, and years like, later. Yeah, you like swing him around and toss him. Like, that's what <laughs> he does. And it's, it's really weird that like, was a thing. I mean, I guess what else I don't know how else he would beat Bowser. I guess jump. Uh, if the only thing they really could have done was like jump on an axe and Bowser and the, <laughs> their drawbridge under Bowser would fall yeah. in the lava. Well, the thing <laughs> is that the Mario they, games are supposed to be like you know family friendly full yeah. of action but not violence yeah. per se so um, there's a lot of you know bouncing on things and breaking things and tossing things but not actually pummeling bowser into a humble bloody submissive pile also, the bowser, next game bowser has the orange hair in this too which he did not in the game they mm. didn't they didn't show it at least in his sprite i believe so that was also a sign that it was informed <laughs> it's a weird this is a weird thing <laughs> um there's one other thing too oh the Toadette. I don't believe Toadette was a thing at the time, I don't think, until like a Mario Kart like Double Dash, maybe? Like she was mm. Toad's partner when they were dancing together. But I just don't remember Toadette popping up ever in the like. Well, like games after the for, and ever before that, <laughs> but I would be wrong. I, I would also think that it would be something where they they put things in the original origin and then eventually they they bring them into the games because you got to keep in mind the original game was a year before this production yeah. or well this release the production could have happened almost at the same time. Well, so. I, I I seriously think yeah. they were using this as a test bed to to test out new concepts and gags and ideas for mm-hmm. for future video games Which because is, it's just so crazy because Toadette. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking now. Was, it was introduced in 2003 in Double Dash for the GameCube. Like, it's, it's, but she's here in '86. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. <sighs> so weird. Blows yeah. your mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, um, like things like the dog character, the prince yeah. character to to match up with Peach. They like never showed up again after this. No, you know? uh, and they were like you know. Apparently, from people who are way into this, commenting on the on the thing that you know, there's like stuff about you know Luigi being money hungry, which was mentioned here and then never brought up again. The prince yeah. was mentioned here, never brought up again. Yeah, um, they they sort of. I don't think they ever characterized the characters as just having like these wild emotional histrionics in yeah. in this way, like the whole time. Yeah, I mean, like later games, like the, later like, the, games. like the RPG games, like the Mar- uh, the Mario and Luigi games, which are these RPG games mm-hmm. um, for Game Boy Advance and DS, are actually very good and um, really give a lot of character to the two of them. Um, you know, and also like games like Luigi's Mansion, like you know, sort of establishes Luigi as kind of like a, kind of a bit of a coward, but still brave, and mm-hmm. you know, d- but certainly not like money hungry. Although you do collect a lot of money in that game. <laughs> you know, <thinking laughs> well, it's all about <laughs> coin collecting. That's that's your point right. mechanism. It's the points mechanism. Yeah. But um, and stars. I mean, they had stars. That was the variation of it too. Yeah. But but I oh but yeah but there's this amusing but the the thing about the 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 
plotting of the action or or the setting of the action is they just like keep having these super they do this very much in the style of a super deformed show where it's just like goofy thing happens goofy thing happens goofy thing happens oh yeah by the way the plot we're dealing with um goofy thing happens it seems so, like you could chop this up into like a bunch of shorts very mm, easily because yes, there's definitely. like very distinct moments that are usually with like a montage of like a weird like 80s Japanese like ballad. <laughs> okay, cut it here. Like, cut it here. Like these like individual scenarios, usually involving one of the enemies in the Mario game. Um, but there aren't that many in Mario. <laughs> so the first Mario right. Mario, so it, Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I, I think it, it hews a little bit too closely to the to the structure and, and pacing of a video game as opposed to trying to incorporate the elements into a, an organically developing story. Well, I mean, there are scenes, like, in the video game, if you were playing this, you'd be done in, like, two seconds. And, you know, here it, it's an extended period of minutes mm -hmm. uh, for them to get through the same thing, right? Here it's like, bounce, 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 you know, boom, done. Lakitu's got to water the spinies, and then... Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Hit and, them with thunder, and then they awaken... Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely something I've said uh, about like subtitled things. Um, when I used to do a lot more Japanese music video subtitling, and people would say, "But no, no, you got to have the live show version of the video. You got to put that in this year." And I'm like, "No, this is for pre-existing fans. Mm. Pre-existing fans are not going to enjoy the spectatorship of seeing them do their stupid dance in like furry <laughs> outfits live on stage." <laughs> Like, they just aren't. It's like, you're a Wait, fan. Wait, do you mean pre-existing? You mean, like, newbie fans? No, I mean pre-existing fans. Oh. People who are already fans of something will enjoy this stuff being subtitled. Yeah. And, and this is sort of the same thing. Is right. This is for... This is not for people who are not fans of Super Mario already. I don't. I don't think you can make the claim that Super Mario, all Super Mario fans, are going to like this thing. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. That's a very. <laughs> I, 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 I think this is even for fans. I mean, this is this is much well, more of an attempt to say, okay, how do we extend this thing into another medium? Okay, and it is not. Well thought out. <laughs> well, but but my point is, and I wouldn't say that at all, Bryce, because I I am pretty sure there are plenty of Super Mario fans who didn't like this. Um, but I I think they were trying to capitalize on the existing fans of the game, and uh, and so I mean a lot of these references and a lot of these things. Uh, I mean, how much of it is actually adding depth to the existing universe that you guys are aware of? Uh, those those weird coincidences that appeared in later games. <laughs> that well, we're talking about, uh, like. Apparently, this this is also. I so the the interesting thing here is this is kind of the moment. I mean, I, I'm not deep enough into Mario lore mm. to, to, because I came not, to it fairly. I'm late. not really either. But. but but this may be the moment when they say, okay, this is something more than just these little characters running around mm -hmm. the screen. Let's like try to give them personalities. Mm. Let's try to give them characters. So it's you know it's what's behind just the the straight up platforming and jumping on the boss at the end. Yeah. And so, from that perspective, it has kind of a his, a mild historical novelty to yeah. it for completionists. It's, it's, yeah. it's more significant because it's the first. It's the first Mario thing. It's the first adaptation of video game characters into an anime. Um, it's There's uh, some information on the web about how this was a, a big merchandising first because previously no one had bothered to do that with video games. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, uh, I would I would suspect there's some history of of you yeah. know first chances here. So yeah. it's significant in the way that trilobites are significant, yeah. but it, you wouldn't really want to play with a trilobite. You'd rather play with a triceratops. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, can we go back to the music for a second? Because I really want oh, to yeah, hammer yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there are basically two instances of music. There are music from the game, and then there is these, like I said, these weird 80s anime <laughs> yeah. ballads. It's just like uh, play along when they're either songs. traveling or like a love song where he's like having an imagination, a fancy dancing with Princess Peach. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Ooh, I mean, I could, but I guess I kind of like the use of the actual in-game music um, in the anime. I mean, that's something I wish Street Fighter did. <laughs> I, I, let's didn't. face it, they were in fact just being cheap because yeah. these are. Sure. When we say the same music, it is actually just right, the, right. the straight chip not tune recorded. <laughs> You're right. They're not orchestrating out the music. Like, like, there was no actual effort that went. <laughs> it, over, yeah. It's not worse than something well, that has. Paul, you had well, a they all that money to write those love ballads <laughs> 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 they had yeah. to, like, yeah. with the vocals and the. Yeah. Well, apparently. The vocalist 
is a is a is a J pop star who voiced Princess Peach in this OA oh, too. Oh, great! There we go. Mario, there we go. Mario. Um, <laughs> I, I was looking up because I was going to try to write the opening with some some Super Mario themes, <laughs> and and I looked up lyrics, and uh, maybe that was the the voice actress that I saw a video of her singing actual lyrics to <laughs> to one of the Super Mario themes. Here we go, Mami Yamase. Yeah, um, Paul. I mean, you made a comment. He's like, "Oh, the music does it for me," and I'm like. Like, yeah, because you've been conditioned well, to it. No, I said the music was the only thing that didn't suck, which I have to say is slightly different <laughs> in terms of a qualitative judgment. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a bit of irony in that because, yes, I mean, it really is. It, it is just the music from the game. So there's, there's nothing to this show that was not externally already a positive. Right, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, not that it's it's bad music. It's just no, that it's no, it's yeah. you know yeah. we're conditioned to it because we play the games or we've heard it so much, mm-hmm. and so to us it's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool, you know that that kind of thing. Hey, the Mario the Mario theme's a good theme. It's, yeah. a, good, it's a good song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely has staying power. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you know, when you got to think about the technicality of them being able to even do that back with programming directly, um, you know, there's there's a feat right there. Any music you know that comes from eight bit games that was reasonable entertaining at all. It would be, you're right, Paul. It would have been nice if they recorded it with actual instruments. Yeah. Not like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and particular, and it actually sounded like tinny and in the background, so like it was not, it wasn't balanced correctly in right. terms of volumes with the rest of the show as it was going on. And it like didn't match those those mm-hmm. J-pop yeah. balance. I, I mean, yeah. at the very least, if they did everything in the 8-bit sound, then okay, great, but it was inconsistent. So... Bowser's ability to like shape shift. Oh weird. yeah, you know, like, where did that come from? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that never popped up again. <laughs> also, his personality seemed kind of weird. Yeah, he's like very nice to Princess Peach. Usually, he's just like, "You're coming with me." Like he's much more rougher right there. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, "Come on, please, his, marry his me." Whole... <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this actually ties into the really crappy voice acting which okay. characterizes this show because basically yeah. all of the characters are terribly unpleasant to listen to. A Peach, uh, especially, probably was probably my yes. Ouch! <laughs> her saying Mario really that, was, that got to me. Yeah, after yeah, a while, yeah. Actually, I, I I I just tuned out most of the audio. <laughs> um, just some dudes talking. Yeah the uh, the whole plot of this is basically Bowser grabs Peach and is going to force her to marry him on Friday the thirteenth oh, yeah. uh, for <laughs> reasons. I, the, the interesting thing was Mario playing the video game at the very start of this. Yeah, what where, video game I was mean, that? Like, looking like a kid like dying away school stuff. Like yeah. I don't want to go to school. Like, get away textbooks. <laughs> and, and running right to left, which yeah. like is no platformer ever. Right, uh-huh. that's weird. Too. And then like Princess Peach and a bunch of standard Mario well, Brothers enemies crop up on the screen and spill out into the yeah. world. But then we never like have anything else about this. So are, are Mario and again. Luigi sucked into their own video game or do they go to a separate world which is the world of the video game? Uh, I, I don't know if it's a video game in the, in the canon of where I believe the yeah. Mario Brothers are not originally mm-hmm. from the Mushroom Kingdom. They were brought into the Mushroom Kingdom. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think it was in the real world that Mario was taken on Donkey Kong in the early days. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I don't know for sure. So I'm no lore expert. But so I don't think Mario Brothers was a video game in the Mario Brother world, like canon. Yeah. <laughs> they get this to end up in the Mushroom Kingdom and, like, hey, why not stay there? It's pretty cool. I think yeah. the Donkey Kong Mario is actually supposed to be the father of Mario Mario, who is the Super Mario. Mario. I don't know. I don't know about that. I know Donkey Kong, whatever. <laughs> He's Cranky Kong in Donkey Country, and the Donkey Kong in Donkey Country is his grandson or something. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. You might be right about that. You know, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, weird. I also thought weird that the paratroopas, which are the flying Koopa Troopas, like, mm-hmm. are actually live like birds, not like turtles. Because remember, he like brought them, like yeah. brought Mario to like a nest of them. I'm like, wait a minute, they're turtles. They're not, <laughs> why do they get a nest like this? <laughs> I know they have wings, but that's because they were given wings by the power of magic. <laughs> but the chicks didn't have shells, did they? I don't remember. I thought yeah, the chicks them. didn't have shells. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a very heavy Alice in Wonderland vibe to a lot of stuff in the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, it's yeah. just like weird stuff happens here. Don't look too deeply into <laughs> it's it. True, it's true. We kind of have to, because what else did what else do while you watch this? Like, <laughs> Yeah, because there's sure nothing engaging going on on the screen. Um, and then 
there was a moment I didn't try to be so crazy, but like when, when Bowser was like, "Father, continue." Or like, I was like, Bro, "We can see Bowser's father." It was just like a priest, a Koopa priest. So yeah. Yeah, it wasn't as, as uh, exciting as I was. Oh, okay. they were, Other they were going to show his father, like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I thought that was actually his father in the uh, lore. So I, I think I, I think I, he was the officiant uh, of the wedding. Yeah, I don't I know. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's I think a it was just like father in the sense of a religious. Uh, figure. Yeah, that's how I interpret it. Ah, interesting. Yes. Yes, and your poor know. departed mother who died three times while giving birth to you by <laughs> I still think, like, it's not that long. I don't know. It's, it's too long. It's so Come weird, on. and, like, it's such a weird thing. Like, it almost seems like yeah. it's worth at least, like, watching at least a little of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the big thing about this is that a lot of people seem just really enamored of it because it's so rare and obscure. Like, yeah, this I was. I can't believe this never came out here, this, like, the, with well, a bad dub and everything. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> actually a fan dub. It, uh, oh, there is, oh. yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, just, it, Canonically, it was released in Japan in the theaters as a movie, and then I think it was released on videotape, but only to rental stores, which was pretty standard for the day. So there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, uh, op- options for people to even buy this, you know, just on, off the shelves. I guess if the video store got tired of it and sold it, somebody picked them up that way. And now the only copies you can really get a hold of are people auctioning them off on eBay for yeah. like $600, like anyone's going to well, pay that I mean, for this. Well, I mean, buying VHS tapes back then was very expensive. You're talking like $100. Yeah, $100 a, a for a video price video point tape. for a VHS tape. Uh, so, you yeah, know, this was not a thing any average mm-hmm. person was going to buy unless they were collecting Unless it. they were hardcore collectors, yeah. 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 There are quite a lot of Mario hardcore collectors nowadays, though. <laughs> well, nowadays, well, I mean, it's yeah. nostalgic for an adult. Um, but when you were a kid, you know, like Lloyd, you had $100 just to buy this, you know, movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's always, like, a few out there. Mm. I guess could have seen, like, what's this, just dub this and put it out, like, on VHS for someone to rent or something. I don't know. It, <laughs> I mean, like, it, it just seemed like that type of thing because Mario's taking mm. off so much in popularity. But then we got Super Mario Bros. Super Show, which I would actually say watch that over this <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I don't think that's not a piece of, like, a masterpiece, but Captain Lou, he tries his hardest. Like Danny Wells. <laughs> Rest his soul, uh. Captain Lou. <laughs> Let's uh, do the Mario, everybody now. Yeah. <laughs> oh and he gosh. never sticks to landing. Every time, he stumbles a little forward. At the end. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, you tried. We're not doing two takes of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can definitely say that after having watched Super Mario Brothers: The Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, I can definitely say at the end of it that that was 61 minutes of Mario-themed animation. It's not just the mission. It's the great mission to mm-hmm. rescue Princess Peach. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's, a, so. it's a weird, such a weird thing. I don't know. <laughs> and one time, one time I would say like, "Don't watch it. Why would you bother?" But like, it sounds like it's just I don't so know. Weird. Now that you've like, heard you're, us talk you're, about like, it, a hardcore Mario fan, like maybe you just need to check this out. It's and they're like, "What is this thing?" <laughs> I'm, I'm sure somebody's put like chunks of it up on YouTube, if not the entire. Oh, thing there's multiple someplace. copies out there on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, no one's yeah. And if you start watching it, you won't watch the whole thing unless like yeah. yeah. I, I, we've watched plenty worse than this in truth though I mean I'm not saying this is good but I didn't find it but in terms of painful. scraping the bottom yeah, of the yeah. barrel it's like at the opposite it's at the holding end of the stick and not the end of the stick that's scraping the bottom <laughs> Well, I was really worried because I, I watched it myself and it was bundled with those OVAs you were talking about. Yeah. I was like, how oh, this is going to go on for an hour and 38 minutes? Like, <laughs> I was like what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a number of the uh, fan subs out there of this seem to also have it bundled with a three part OVA called Super Mario Amada or Amada series, where they take mm-hmm. Mario and they just sort of force him into two Japanese fairy tales and Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, thank no, God. Snow White, sorry, Snow White. Uh, mm-hmm. And Mario Bros. 3, I think, is, uh, has just come out. Yeah. the Koopalins are there. Yeah, so, it's, so it's Mario Bros. 3 related. Yeah. yeah, it came out years after the movie that right. was the main yeah. topic. Yeah, no, we just we just kind of watched the movie itself. So, oh. um, yeah, okay. <laughs> See, I forced myself to watch the OVA. The OVAs are much worse animated, but... What? Yeah. They're worse animated it's than not, this? They don't really animate. Like it's, it's, they, it's more like a motion comic. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just when you think you can't like hit bottom, they just like start pulling out the jackhammer and digging deeper. Yeah, but I love the moment where they're sort of telling a modified version of Momotaro story, the Peach. Yeah, the, the Peach bo- Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they give like Mario a gun. It's like, here, Mario, take this. It might help you on their journey type of a deal yeah, with a gun. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> he never actually uses no. it either. He's he like, like jumping like and pokes Bowser yeah. with it yeah. a couple times after they capture him. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Get moving, Bowser, or I'm gonna fill you full of hot lead, she. So I think, like, for really hardcore Mario fans, I think they might actually get a kick if they're sort of MST3King these instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it might actually be like a good club thing I, if you I have would, a sort of more like hard group. And maybe, maybe I'm just assuming, um, but I would think if someone's a hardcore Mario fan, they have a copy of this somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, er, uh, I mean, this, this is the kind of thing. I'm a pretty big Mario fan. I didn't even like, procure a copy of this. <laughs> this is the kind of thing. <laughs> this is the kind of thing a hardcore Mario fan will watch and say, "Man, you know, <laughs> this is not good." <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't add anything to the experience. Um, oh. You guys are all being more positive about this than I think it deserves. Because this is crap. I mean, it's just crap. Are you kidding? If we say anything bad about Mario, Ooh. people will come to our house with muck rakes and torches and kill us. Mario's been in plenty of terrible games. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mario's missing. Uh, Mario's Time Machine. I thought was a very bad educational game. <laughs> uh, if, if they come after Mario, us, they'll have to go through Bryce and Super Smash Brothers to get yeah. to the rest Mario of us. Mario renews so. his license at the DM MV for seven hours. <laughs> Hotel Mario for the CDI. That was also a very bad Mario game. <laughs> Were there any good games on the CDI? No. no. <laughs> um, those Zelda games. Oh, man. There was a startup screen. That was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just glad. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of glad I saw it. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, it's something that... like I'm never going to watch it again and whatever, but... <laughs> I mean, at least having seen it, one, you can say you've seen it, and two, it can maybe work as a bit of trivia at a party, because how many people really know about this, so... Yeah, sure. Uh, they yeah. have the internet, they know there's, enough. There's, 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 there's tons of things on the except, internet. There's plenty of things people don't know. Ex- except if you actually encounter somebody who's seen it, then you're trying to, like, use this as cool cred. <laughs> you're you're going to lose it <laughs> look, all. Look, both us, I will, I will give you a clap <laughs> if you get a date from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but if someone says, oh, I've seen Super Mario Brothers, The Great Mission to Rescue Priskin Princess Peach, you can always go, bitch, I watched the Star Wars holiday special live when it first aired. Oh, God. Shut I, up. I want to see if I can find a copy of that. I know it's that on there YouTube. Is. It sucks. It sucks. sucks. <laughs> it's right, so seen, bad. I've seen like reviews of it, but I haven't actually seen the actual thing. So like, I do know like everything that happens in it. I just haven't actually watched the pure version that I've seen. Okay, go depth. ahead. It's 52 minutes out of your life. You will never get back. Mm. There's plenty of <laughs> moments like that in life when you really think about it, though. <laughs> okay, so um, links. What do we what do we need to do to, to do we close have up what, on this? Anime News Network link for this? I think. Yeah, I do have an Anime News Network link for this. There is also a Mario Wiki, which actually tell describes mm. this in depth. I didn't bother to make a OG link for it, but like if you just generally do a search for the uh, Mario movie search. Princess Peach, blah, 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 they're finding like a lot of in depth things. But that being said, just a general anime news network link. And just to let people know, this actually has four digits. Up until this point, we've only had three digits, but the OG link now has four digits. Oh, really? 600 show. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. wow. Hitting wow. the big time, fellas. The y- big time. You guys can figure that out. It's base 36. <laughs> so, <laughs> and not uh, and case insensitive. <laughs> So, for the Super Mario Brothers move... Peach Hime Kyushuts Dai Sakusen. You can check out at, or check out information on it from Anime News Network at oglink.com slash 109Q. So, again, four digits, 109 plus a Q. Okay, so we must have passed four digits a while ago. Um, okay, with that said, thank you, everyone. Uh, let's uh, let's close the show up. Number six hundred. Wow. Let's do the Mario. Yeah, not not gonna do that. Oh, come on, it's <laughs> really <laughs> easy. Just take one step and then again. That's it. Come on, you're doing the Mario. It's almost like the time warp, except even simpler. Yeah. So yeah, all the things we mentioned here. Uh, please visit our website www.talkinggeneration.net or just ognetworks.tv. That's sort of the main page for all the shows and maybe future shows. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Oh, uh, maybe not. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 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 what are we gonna do next week? Good question. You will find out on Wednesday. 
Wednesday. For feedback, you can hit us up at otaku.generation at gmail.com. Yes, it's true. You can email us. Uh, you can also hit us up by Skype if you want to leave voicemail. Otaku Generation, one word, via Skype. Um, or by phone, 610-628-3154 or 206-965-8154 or 484-393-1405 uh, for the Google voicemail. Uh, make sure you leave uh, you hit pound there after the message um, or we'll just cut you off okay uh, with that said we have a fortune and I don't know what the appendage is going to be <laughs> I'm going to go with the, just a mood altering mushroom in their pants but if someone has bear and then <laughs> with a lack of two in between the sheets <laughs> okay you can then do the fortune this time please <laughs> okay this week's fortune cookie to guide you through the upcoming week you would prosper in the field of wacky inventions. With a lack of two between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, have a good week. Uh, until next time, bye.